So after reading some comments and emails lately, I realized there's some confusion when it comes to the app stores that are available, especially on Android. So today, I'm going to be doing a bit of a different format to explain all the different stores and what's available. So at the top, we have two stores that probably most people, if not all, who use smartphones have heard of. We have Google Play and we have the Apple App Store. We're not going to be talking about the Apple App Store today, just for continuity's sake. I wanted to post that. But these are the two big companies, you know, Google, Apple, they run those two giant app stores. Since we're not talking about Apple today, we're going to get rid of that. And so on this side, we have Google Play Store. Now the Google Play Store, what that gets you is access to a repository of apps. So the Google Play Store app, that's just a front end that allows you to access this back end, which for this video, I'm going to be calling Google App Repository. I don't know if that's the official name. I don't even know if it has a name, but that's what we're going to be calling it. And now there are two popular ways to access this Google app repository on Android. The first is using the official Google Play client. The second is using another client, which is called Aurora Store. So all the apps I mentioned in today's video will be linked down below the thumbs up button. So if you want to go and check those out, install them, test them, they'll be down there for you to click. So like I mentioned, these are just two front end applications that access the same app repository on the back end. And when I say app repository, the official definition of that, I'm going to read from my notes just to make sure I get that correct. A repository is a centralized place where data is stored and maintained in an organized way. So we have this singular app repository in the back end, and we have two different front end applications that can access it. So both apps have their pros and cons. Aurora Store, you can use one of the anonymous accounts on there to access the apps. On Google Play, you need to log in to access the apps on there. But the main point to be aware of is that these two apps are just accessing the same apps on the back end. Pretty straightforward. So we're going to slide this over. We're going to put up a wall in the middle. That's what this little red bar represents. And now we're going to talk about open source app stores. So the main app repository that everyone knows about on the open source side is called F-Droid. So I think a lot of confusion comes from the way the word F-Droid is used. People throw it around like, hey, you know, is that app on F-Droid or using F-Droid? At its core, F-Droid is an app repository similar to the Google app repository. You know, it's a centralized location where data is stored and maintained in an organized way. That is what the F-Droid app repository is. So on the open source side, it's similar to how we have Google Play and Aurora Store to access the Google app repository. On the open source side, we also have the official F-Droid app, which again, I want to make the distinction. This is the F-Droid app, and we also have the F-Droid app repository. They are two different things. So when you hear the word F-Droid, or when someone says F-Droid, if you want to be specific, you need to know if they're talking about the app repository or the F-Droid app. And so the reason it's important to understand the distinction between the F-Droid app repository and the F-Droid official app is there are multiple ways to access the F-Droid app repository. We have Neo Store. We have Droidify, which from what I understand are the same thing, just named differently. Neo Store is the new version. We have Aurora Droid. So these different apps you might have or install, they're all accessing that same F-Droid app repository. The official client, all the apps are there. Droidify, Neo Store, they're just looking at that same app repository and displaying it in a different way to you, different interface. It's just that you're using a different front end application to access this app repository backend. So for an app to be present in the F-Droid app repository, it needs to be FOSS, which stands for free and open source software. So this means their source code must be publicly available and a popular place for a majority of apps to host their source code is GitHub. So any apps that are in the F-Droid app repository, their source code is going to be somewhere publicly available. Now this same criteria to be free and open source software does not apply to the Google app repository. An app can be closed source, such as Spotify, which is something that I use. If I want to get that, I can only download it from the Google app repository. It's not available in the F-Droid app repository. So now a popular question that comes up is, well, my app is available in both the Google app repository and the F-Droid app repository, which one should I download it from? So now Telegram, for example, that is a FOSS app, free and open source software. So that one is actually available in the Google app repository, the F-Droid app repository, and the source code is also available on GitHub. So what I would say at the time of this recording, again, it's important to remember that security and privacy are always evolving and I don't know everything. I'm just making the best call that I can. I have concerns with how F-Droid signs apps in their app repository where they sign apps with their own keys instead of signing them with the developer's keys. 
and I covered that topic in a previous video, which I will link down below. Therefore, I'm avoiding any apps in the F-Droid app repository, and I'm also avoiding any apps that provide access to the F-Droid app repository. So to answer the question, where should you download it from? In the case of Telegram, or whatever app you have that's available in both locations, I would say download that using either Aurora Store or the Google Play Store, whichever one you have on your device and whichever one you prefer to use. If all the apps you use are available in the Google App Repository, then these are all you need to use. So I just want to go over a couple more things in regards to the clients used to access the F-Droid App Repository. So while some of these clients are better than others, you know, for example, the official F-Droid app is written with out-of-date libraries. They continuously host an out-of-date version on their website for compatibility purposes, from what I understand, which that is not good security practice. As an alternate, we have Droidify and Neostore. These apps are better, they are more modern, they follow better programming practices, and they don't use any out-of-date libraries, as far as I understand. But the root of the issue is that while some of these apps are better than others, they're still accessing that same F-Droid app repository in the back end that signs apps in a way that I don't think is a good security practice. So no matter what client you're using, you're still susceptible to that bad practice. So I just want to be clear that I'm not trying to dog on anyone's open source efforts. It's just the first step to improving your security is being aware. It's important to be aware of the security risks you're accepting when you decide to use something that is widely suggested to use everywhere you look. So now with that little disclaimer out of the way, which I'm sure some people will not be happy with, but it is what it is. The last scenario you might come across is that there are some apps that are only available on the F-Droid app repository, such as NewPipe. NewPipe is not available on the Google app repository, but as it is available on F-Droid, that means it is free and open source software, so it's also available on GitHub. So for those apps where they're only available on GitHub or F-Droid, I would suggest not using F-Droid and instead using the RSS method that I mentioned in a previous video. Again. I will link that down below. Using the RSS reader, we're just going to be tracking the updates from GitHub, downloading them manually, and manually installing them. And yes, this method is more work, which I've heard some people comment on my video about. But what this allows you to do is avoid the F-Droid app repository and any apps associated with it completely. Use the RSS reader to download the apps directly from GitHub. Avoid this, and then any other apps you can get from the Google app repository. So that's what I currently do on my device. I have Aurora Store to access any apps in the Google App Repository, and I have the Redo RSS Reader to download any apps that are only available on GitHub, such as NewPipe. And then one last point that I want to make, if it's acceptable for your threat model to use the F-Droid App Repository with the way they sign apps and some other less than ideal security practices they have, then that's fine too. It's just about being aware of what's going on and making a conscious decision on what's best for you. And also, I'm not claiming that what I do with Aurora Store and the Redo app is the best method. It's just what's best for me at this current time from what I understand. So if you'd like to discuss this further, please feel free to leave your thoughts down below. I try to take my time responding so I can leave useful replies. And if you don't want to leave a comment on YouTube, which is completely understandable, feel free to send me an email to the address down below in the description box. So I also have a full resolution copy of this image available on my website, which I'll link down below for your reference, because why wouldn't you want a copy of this beautiful image made by some stranger on the internet?